We'll work it out. Yes, my God, we'll work it out. To we King God, we'll work it out. It's working right now. He's 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 working right now. I know it, I know it. He's working right now. I believe his work. God is working now. God is Um, sing it out. God is working that I am, all that I have, beautifully made by your hand. There are no questions, there is no doubt, you look at me and feel proud. You're not ashamed. You stand in wonder of what you've made. 
You're not ashamed. You stand in wonder. Oh, when you pay my Good morning. Diane, is his name, what's his name, Jesse? Good morning. I want to welcome all of you here this morning. Um, I want to welcome those folks who are joining us on Facebook um, or online or will join us at some future point um, while watching your video on YouTube. I'm going to ask 
that surely come and lead us in our opening prayer. Good morning, church family and friends. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, no matter what goes on in our life, we still have a lot to be thankful for. And we know and realize, and I hope we all appreciate the fact that it's you. Lord God, we want to thank you for each and everything that you have done, doing, and about to do for us. There is no one like you. You're with us each and every day. We may not get all the time, on time, what we think we want, but you know what it is, and you will eventually take care of it. Be with all, each and every one. We are all going through something at some times. We know we can put it in your hands. Lord God, we ask you to be with our dear pastor as he bring us your word today and be with each and every one here today and those that couldn't make it, want to be here, couldn't be. They hear us, some of them, and some may not, but they can all look up to you for whatever is in need. In Jesus' name, we pray now and forevermore. Amen. I say this morning that our church has lost a family member. Uh, in the passing of Jesse Parker, who was music director here for a, a number of years and was director of Voices. Um, during our meditation time, I would invite you to think of the beatitude, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And thank and meditate on those times when you have experienced comfort in your morning, or you may want to use this time to share your morning with God and allow God to comfort you. Of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand with me as I, we sing our opening.
Come just as you are. Just as you are, hear the spirit call. Come just as you are. Come and see from the sea. Come and let just as Don't you hear the spirit Just as you My king Come and live The Blessed are those who mourn, the Lord shall be comforted. We remember the family of Jesse Parker and the extended family loved and cared for him. We remember the family of Joyce's uncle Richard. Richard, right? I think I got that right. It's always embarrassing yeah, when I get a name wrong. Um, and his family as they adjust to the different circumstances that he is going through. We continue to pray for Yvonne as life changes around her. We pray for all who mourn this morning, not necessarily a death, but who mourn places in their lives that are broken and that are calling for them to find new ways of living. Are there other concerns or prayer requests this morning? Yes. Please pray for her. And then since you're all 
She's in the hospital with a very swollen leg and an nausea. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Others. Will you pray with me? We start, O oh God, in silence so that we may lift to you the deepest needs in our hearts. There are needs in this congregation, both those who are in this sanctuary and those who are joining us online, needs that we do not bring to words too often, needs that perhaps we don't even have words for, we just have an ache, a hunger, we bring these all to you. We have lifted the names this morning of those in particular need. And we hold them in the light of your love. Grant that when we meet folks with needs, we may find compassion. And that we may see in their face, your face, and know that our love for them is love for you. We pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so, Come on down. Hi there. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. I love your brace. Do you take music at school? I mean, do you all play recorders at school? Do you play piano and the guitar? Do you sing in a chorus? Okay. I, I was thinking today about music. And I was thinking today about scales. As in, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, no, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, to. Now, we know that a scale 
starts somewhere. And it can kind of start anywhere. So it could start do re mi fa so la ti do. Am I that good? Or I could get in trouble by going do re mi fa so la ti do. And by my scale, you'd be able to say what key I was singing in. I normally sing in the key of off. <laughs> that was a grown-up joke. Being off key means you don't sing good. Um, so learning scales is really important, whether you're playing the piano or the guitar or the recorder or singing. Um, and knowing where your key starts is really important. Okay. Um, some, some keys are higher, like uh, an old cowpoke when riding out on a dark and windy day. That's a minor key. Okay. Um, or Heavenly sunshine, heavenly sunshine, flooding my soul with glory divine. That's a major key. Okay, and the different key we sing in um, makes us feel a particular way. Why am I saying that? I'm not sure. No. Um, why I'm saying that is where we start whether it's singing or reading a book or running a race or almost anything, where we start will say a lot about how we're going to understand what's happening or how we're going to sing or how we're going to play. I hope that makes some sense. And if it doesn't yet, listen to the sermon when I talk to the grown-ups because we're going to be talking about where we start thinking about Jesus. And where we start thinking about Jesus is really important to understanding Jesus. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to start thinking about you. And help us to start with knowing that you love us. And if that is the most important thing we can know, that you love us. And when we start from there, everything else will fall in place. Amen. Thank you. Please stand up, greet the people around you, wave to the folks on Facebook.
Excuse me. So. He's, he's underneath. There he is. He's coming back up. Let me invite you to begin returning to your seats. Maybe. And now I have the choice to come and leave us in the of our offering. We thank you, Lord, for the time and small things that we give back for the programs that we give. We thank you for the people that are here today, Lord, and the national economy. The church members who weren't able to make it today, we visit you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
Um, those of us of a certain age who remember what the movie is called Saturn of Music, in which Julie uh, Andrews begins teaching um, the children that she is caring for for the same. And one of her first songs of them is that song. And then there's this jumble, and then and there's amen, amen, or as the case may be. One other thing I want to say before we began that struck me as I was getting ready to put the sermon together. Uh, as those most of you know, I do some blacksmithing, and one of the wonderful things about blacksmithing is that. Iron is very forgiving. You can mess it up, heat it up, reform it. But sometimes you heat the metal so that you can work the piece you're happy with further. I'll give you an example. Um, I make a book. It's got a taper so I can drive it into the wall or a tree or whatever. It's got a hook and a little curly cue. But I want to put a twist in it. 
And so I keep the metal I have, not because there's something wrong with this piece. It's not that I'm trying to hammer it back into a blob that I can reshape. It is that I want to work further with what I want it to be. So I heat the metal and I put it in the vise and I twist it to put that little twist curly cue in the shaft of this hook. Not because I want to destroy the original, but because I want to improve it and take it to where I want it to finally be. So I would ask as we begin the study together that when you find yourself feeling like that Facebook post, dear God, jump, 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 jump amen, then you imagine that God may be not trying to destroy how you believe, but to take how you believe and live in him and take you further in your understanding and your walk. So we're going to start at the beginning. We know uh, when we pick up at Matthew 4, um, verse 1, we know some things have already happened. Jesus has been baptized. We've had the infancy. Let me do it in order. We've had the infancy narratives. Jesus has been baptized. Jesus has gone into the wilderness to be tempted. And then we have this. Oh. Keep going. Keep going. You'll skip the temptations. I try to always skip temptations. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Ah, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Hold it. Okay. We're not keep going. There we go. There we go. Now, now, who uses the temptations again? But, but I want to do something a little different. We're going to begin Jesus' ministry. Now, when Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he departed to Galilee. Now, um, pay some attention to that. Jesus is John's cousin. John has been arrested and put into prison. And Jesus very wisely decides he probably wants to be somewhere else. He does not want to be arrested yet. He's timing for what's going on. And leaving Nazareth, he came and he lived in Capernaum, which is by the sea in the regions of Zebulun and Nephali. That it might be fulfilled what was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Nephalti, all Ali, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light, and upon those who sat in the region and shadow of death, light has dawned. Let me stop you. Whenever you see, particularly in the book of Matthew, because he does this a lot, so that it may be as the prophet had written. Matthew is trying to say, this did not happen by accident. The involvement of God. It's not to say, oh, we predicted this, but to say, 
God was active in this happening. So, so, so pay attention because Matthew is going to want very often to say to us, this was God's doing. God was involved in this. Now, go back one slide, please. Two slides. Galilee of the Gentiles. From Jump Street, Jesus is drawing people from everywhere. In fact, there's a set of Gentile cities called the Decapolis. You're going to see it again because this is where Jesus meets the garrison demoniac, the guy who's naked, covered in chains and scars and all that stuff, and screaming among the tombstones. Okay, that's that's where. Jesus is going to meet him. Okay, you can come back. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I'm feeling repentant. I'm feeling terrible. I feel so bad about everything I've done. Woe is me. That's not repentance, folks. You've seen me do this before. I'm going to repent. I'm going to show you my repentance. To repent is to turn and move in a different direction. When my Aikido instructor says to me, Tenkan, he means for me to turn and move in another direction. And if I keep going the direction that I was going, he's going to whack me in the, literally, whack me in the back of the head and go, is that what I showed you? Repent. Change what you are doing. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, real quick, Matthew is a good Jew. He is writing to a Jewish audience. He will not say the name of God. He won't do it. Even today, and if you go to a synagogue, the name of God is never written. They have taken the vowels out from between the consonants, and all you will see is those three vowels. So when, when Matthew says kingdom of heaven, he means the same thing that the other gospels mean when they say kingdom of God. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Imagine that this is a railroad track. It runs right out the front. We didn't know it was a railroad track, but it's a railroad track. And this morning, suddenly we all hear a... And we all turn around and look, and there is a train coming through the door and down this track. And what's the first thing some of y'all are going to say to me? Get off the track. Jesus is trying to say that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, heaven is as intimately present right now as that train coming down the track. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And if you don't turn around and move in another direction, you're going to miss it.
That's not how we normally think about the kingdom of heaven. Yes, sir. Now, how you interpret this, how you view this, is going to have a lot to do with what I said to the kids. When I say to the kids, the most important place to start is to say, God, oh, y'all didn't listen to the children's moments. What did I say was the most important thing for you to remember? God is important. Yes, God is important. And I say, God loves me. That's where we start. That's where we start. Now, you think that sounds a little strange because of course some of us and many people now in churches all over America this morning start with God judges me. Now, if I say as my starting place, God judges me and I see a train coming, I go, oh, God is going to mow me down. I don't think about the kingdom of God coming except as a way to smash me. But if I start with God loves me, as my starting point. Then when I, I see the train coming, I, I, I need to change where I'm going because I'm walking dead toward it. I need to step off the track. Well, they need to get on board. But do I see it as an act of judgment or do I see it as a gift? When God heats me up like a piece of iron and puts me back in the fire, do I think of that as, oh, I am a horrible person and God is punishing me because I feel so distressed and miserable and confused? Or do I say, God is about the business of shaping me toward that which God wants me to be now? Or I can say, oh, I, I, I wasn't supposed to be this over here. No, maybe you were. Maybe, Maybe being this over here is what brought you to here, which gives you compassion for people around you. Maybe, Maybe God even took the worst that could happen to you. And we know that God works together with us. We are laborers together with God. In all things, God works together with those who are good, with those who love him and are called according to his purpose. That means the kingdom of God is working and moving right now. Right now. Right now. In a little book called The Great Divorce. C.S. Lewis takes an imaginary trip to the outskirts of heaven where a bus has, from hell has dropped a group of people. And they can go to heaven if they are willing to let go of what it is that took them to hell. If the kingdom of God is here now, what is stopping me from joining it? 
what direction do I have to change to be walking in the direction of the kingdom? What do I have to let go of so that I can take what God is giving me? And this is an old image and an old story that I want to tell you. And does anybody around here remember pop beads? They were, they were little plastic beads, and you could put them together, and you could pop them apart. And when we were kids, I mean, you could make necklaces and stuff out of them. And, and uh, you know, they were like 10 cents for a pile of them. And you, little girls used to make stuff out of them. There was a story of a little girl who had made this really beautiful me necklace. And she would not be separated from it. She worked to sleep, she worked the shower, she worked school every day. She had to have that little pot bead necklace. And the story goes that one day, about bedtime, her daddy came to her and said, Sweetie, you're a little too attached to that necklace. I want you to give it to me. I can't do that, Dad. I cannot. I cannot let this go. Sweetie, I'm telling you, I want you to give me that necklace. Daddy, please don't tell me to do that. Please don't make me give up this thing that I made that I love so much that that I just look at it and it makes me so happy. Give me the necklace. So with tears in her eyes, she took the necklace off and she handed it to her daddy who reached into his pocket and gave her a string of pearls. Are clinging to the things that we've made and God wants to give us something more. But we are so attached to this thing. And maybe this thing was good. I mean, this child was very artistic. But we become so dependent on and attached to and, and in love with the things of this world. It's a phrase both Jesus and Paul use. Loving the things of this world. That we miss what God wants to give us in the kingdom of God being here right now. It's hard. It's hard. It makes me feel like that Facebook post. I, I, I warned y'all before we started this sermon series that having gone to Thailand and to India had forced me to look at the gospel in some new ways. But that kind of sounds like, oh, they're being that nice pastor. No, it's not. My brain is a hot mess. Because I am trying to look at the gospel not from where I sit as a privileged middle class white male in America, but to ask myself, what does that gospel sound like and how does it speak to a 30 year old woman sitting in a refugee camp? whose son has died on the battlefield and she's got a grandchild on her lap and they just barely made it over the border. God is putting me back in the fire. God is shaping me for what comes next. By the way, no 
blacksmith. And God in my mind is the master blacksmith. Puts a piece of metal on the fire just for the heck of it. There's always a goal. We're always moving toward a better shape. A more workable piece. Join me in the forge. Think about what it means to you. If the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is at hand, where do I need to repent? Not sit around feeling miserable, but change. Move in a different direction. Let go of some treasure I've been holding on to. Because the kingdom of God is here now. Has it completely arrived? No. No. And it won't until the Lord comes back. But it's pulling into the station. It's here now among us. And in next Sunday's sermon, we're going to hear Jesus talk about what we need to be focusing on to live in that kingdom. But this week, let's just notice the kingdom of heaven is among us. Amen and amen. Please stand with me as we sing our final song. I worship your holy The sun comes up, it's a new dawn. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever lives past and whatever lies before me, let me meet where things meet. Your name is great, your heart is kind, for all your goodness, keep on singing. A thousand reasons, hearts.
Worship your holy name, Jesus. I will worship your holy name. Worship your holy name. The kingdom of God is among us. Let us greet it, strengthened by the knowledge that in the goodness of God we were born. By the watchfulness of God we are kept all the day long, and in the love and mercy of God we are all being redeemed and made whole. <laughs> Have a great week. The peace of God be with you. Hello. Oh, sorry to hear about chats. So, so bombed. Yeah. yeah. Was it anything long term or was it 
You don't know? Um, he, he was diabetic. Oh, okay. And he didn't really take care of himself. Okay. And, and I, I yeah. know our last, you know, coming up to our last time, he, he wasn't well. Yeah. And I sent him an e card and said, after the time for a couple of weeks, I sent him a card that, you know, hope you're feeling better. Let me know if you want anything. And he says, well, I'm going to the doctor's maybe that way. Um, and then he went on vacation with his other family. Uh -huh. yeah, they have a tradition to go to Myrtle Beach every year. Uh -huh. Last morning, they were ready to get ready to leave, and he hadn't come out. Oh. Uh, really, really sad. Yeah. Because, you know, All right. taking care of himself. Yeah. He wouldn't be. Yep. If he's taking care of himself. Yeah. Working on it. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure. He's he like, what are you talking about? You know, <laughs> Hey, if I had double vision, I wouldn't be riding a bicycle. I know that much. <laughs> no. <laughs> I've learned a little bit. <laughs> Nathan heard anything from him? Yeah, or... broke house, oh, yeah. Then. Okay. Broke in, um, Steve had told me a little bit of what's been going on. The basement. Bruce, Bruce told them, you know, he and the crazy girl um, <laughs> told them they needed to leave and they said, I'm not leaving. So Friday morning, Bruce went to court and got a protective order. They were forced to leave. But then Friday evening, they were back and right. they, they had called the police and said, well, one of them said, I have an inhaler or anything. In there. So, you know, told me. Took them all. Three big dogs in the house. It was awful. They took all three. No, they no? just took They just took the. Bella and Susan wouldn't have gone with them. Yeah. But not. Because they're, they're afraid of them. Yeah. So, okay. That's not good for a pit bull to be afraid. I know. <laughs> Those are big dogs. Big dogs. Mm -hmm. That's not a good situation. Yeah. <laughs> He's fine when, when there's a barrier between everybody, but you know, when you get right there, yeah. he runs his eyes up to the ground. <laughs> yelling. Running and hiding. I know. I know. What a vision. <laughs> <laughs> They're both down one bar. Uh, I don't know. You want to charge them?
Okay. Finding different plugs. 